Cavs. We're here at Doncaster Cables in Doncaster. Strangely, the uh, amazingly, the, yes, the name <laughs> the, the name gives it away. We thought since we've been looking at manufacturing armored cables today, we thought we'd just have a look at possibly some of the products that you might use with armored cables. So, so Joe. Uh, what have you got for us? First up, I've got the lovely, lovely earthing nuts. Now we've actually done a, a full kind of product installation demo review yeah. of this before, but we think it's worth mentioning again. We've actually been alerted to some really interesting points about this that we weren't aware of. If you've not seen an earthing nut before, the idea is that it does away with the need for a banjo, uh, which is really helpful, which means you don't have to drill the container that this is uh, terminated into, so you don't need to uh, mess about with the enclosure. Uh, the really handy thing is it's got these little teeth on here. And what's really good about that is there's a couple of things. Number one, this was primarily designed to go into a plastic enclosure. So if you put this into a plastic enclosure and tighten up this into the plastic, those teeth will bite into the plastic and grip it really firmly. And that means that you don't have to have the two lock nuts with the banjo in between. Uh, and you can just uh, tighten this up and then you've got these excellent little uh, threaded holes in the side of here where you can connect up your earth lead uh, and then just screw that down onto there and that's your earth lead connected. Um, yeah. yeah, removing the need for that banjo. So the yes. banjo where we were traditionally coming from the armour in through into the box insulated yep. enclosure, you actually got a little fly lead that goes on the outside Absolutely. there. It's really good, Joe, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, if anyone's watching this video who's a past, present or future learner of myself or Gary, you'll be staggered to hear us referring to that as a banjo because, of course, we very specifically call it an earthing ring in the college. Yeah. We but can. while we're here, we can call it a banjo because that's what everyone calls it. Yeah. Um, another just interesting point that was, was brought to our attention is that these teeth were designed to, to bite into plastic, but they serve another function, which Teacher. if you connect that onto a metal enclosure that is painted, if you twist that round when you put that on, the teeth will scrape the paint away from the inside of the metal enclosure, but then it's really not a good idea to leave it that way around in the metal enclosure because it can actually, under fault conditions, it can cause damage to the enclosure, which is not so good. So what you do is you take that off, turn it round, and then you put the flat smooth edge down onto the uh, painted surface that's been scraped away and it gives you a better earth connection onto the box. A larger surface area connected to the yep. bare metal yep. onto the brass Absolutely. nut itself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, particularly critical. That's You have to do that if you're not using a separate fly lead for the earth. If okay. you're using a separate fly lead, our understanding is it's okay to okay. do it with the teeth down. But the recommendation seems to be use the teeth to scrape the paint away, then flip it over. So just worth knowing. That's a good piece of advice because yeah. we wasn't aware of that the first yeah. time we had a little go. I love that. Yeah, we do. Can you read the instructions? Well, instructions, <laughs> instructions I think will come up later in this presentation. Okay, so what are you on, Gordon? Uh, okay, well, on more, more gland fun, I've got the uh, Storm uh, cable band from, uh, from Specialized Wiring Accessories. Um, so obviously, you used to, Joe, you've got a very traditional yep. gland there, outdoor gland. Outdoor gland. CW gland. It is. Um, interesting thing about those that often referred to as outdoor glands, um, that don't tend to have IP ratings mm. on the packaging. They yeah. don't. So you're fitting a gland and you have no clue what the IP yeah. rating is. These are IP68 rated glands. Okay. Uh, you don't need a shroud with them. Um, so okay. it's a plastic um, construction on the outside. Um, and, it, and it basically comes together like you would on a, on a metal gland. It's got a very good uh, O-ring rubber seal to go around the outer cable nice. uh, sheath and then the usual bits to trap the armour uh, underneath. Okay. Uh, so they say it does work with uh, steel wired armoured cable, but also a lot of the braided cables you see out there as well. So That's it's got uh, multi-function use. So effectively it's incorporated from the outside that looks like a stuffing gland mm. and buried within that is almost a traditional steel armoured gland. Yeah. But you said it was IP68. Yes. And we know the connecting point between the gland and the enclosure is generally the point at mm. which we could get a failure. So yes, so there's there. one other the great feature, obviously people, a lot of people don't realise you use an IP68 box and an IP68 gland uh, and probably both are perfectly fine and good, but nobody actually mentions that junction in between. So the box manufacturer will have tested their box, the gland manufacturers test the gland, but they don't <laughs> test them together. Where the two join. And yeah. the one critical component in that discussion is uh, is basically a little rubber O-ring, okay, which so you do one. not get with. Ah, so there's a washer there. Between there is a washer, right. which I'm struggling to get off, but I've got it there. So yeah, so most glands you buy never, ever, ever have that with them. And that's, wow. the, that's the critical component. And I can speak from bitter experience of emptying out a lot of leaky boxes over the years. Um, 
that, that, that's often missing. So I think this is a great product. Uh, but there's an added bonus in the pack. Which is? So, the pack. And there's a pack one there. It comes with a lot of stuff in them, which includes two earthing nuts. So you actually get the earthing nut with the product with in the, the pack? With the Storm uh, product. So Fantastic. everyone's winner. And not just that, you also get the crimps for that size as oh well. So goodness. if it's the larger one, you get some of these... Uh, some of the big uh, metal crimps. Yeah, plain crimps, yeah. And then the, the, the smaller one comes with a whole selection of in all colors. So anyone who's using this product is gonna, gonna end up with a toolbox full of crimps. Thank you, SWA. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Very yeah, cool. Funny how they've come up with the perfect idea of how to connect an SWA cable Absolutely. to an enclosure. Yeah, so, really good. I think that's a good product. Yeah, yeah. and again, yeah. probably the fact is you're going to be connecting this into more likely a plastic enclosure, aren't you? If you're doing it into an IP68 enclosure, yeah. which is where the earthing ring comes into its own, that's specifically what it was designed for. Yeah. Brilliant. And no specialist tools? You know, just standard electrician's toolkit. There's nothing extra there, so we've got a new gland. Yeah. But actually, we don't need any new kit. Very yeah. nice. And just Does the top tip, don't over tighten the um, <laughs> o-ring. Yeah. So I've got a product here from Whisker. We all like the Whisker mm. range of products that we've looked at in the past, and it's the using the gel, sharp gel technology. Mm -hmm. And we've incorporated the ability now in this insulated branch joint, okay. actually to have two steel armors to be joined together and then a third one to be taken off it. Okay. However, I'm looking at the camera and I'm asking people out there in the world of social media, perhaps to contact me uh, through the usual medium, through Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. Because I'm, I'm not found enough information out mm. of the packet with it. So I've struggled and not found on the packet's IP rating, but we believe with a little bit of research it to be that's IP68. Again, the, the online information is a bit, little bit ambiguous it's, again, isn't it? There's multiple products in that range, yeah. which some of them claim to be IP68. Yeah. And this one doesn't seem to have that. Doesn't seem to have any IP rating. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, unlike some of the other products in the range, when the, the actual joint is inserted and closed, there's maybe no clamping at each mm. side, which means for me personally, looking at it, how is this steel armoured apart from the, the length of the actual conductors being cut precisely at length from pulling one way or the other? Also, just a silly little thing that when I was looking at it and the instructions, I'd like to see the words I can bury it because I can't yeah. find anything to suggest that I'm sure people are sitting there and probably laughing at me now, going, of course you can bury it, Gaz, or of course you can't bury it, Gaz. They're the sort of information that we'd, we'd like social mm. media feedback on, as well as the following. I've got a uh, termination here, and you can see on the table, if you were nice and close, we've got a selection of Allen keys. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. All products well, come well, with Allen keys, keys today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all different sizes, which yeah. is really handy. <laughs> so obviously I've got a, an uninsulated connector. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing that and there was no insulating section for it to go into, which was a, a, a little bit of a thought process when I'm pop popping it into the gel. Um, and also, when I tighten this up, there is no shearing off, gents. Mm. Actually, I don't believe that's a maintenance free. Yeah, so it I've put it in a gel, free. I've buried mm. it in the garden, yeah. and I'm not convinced I'm happy yeah. personally with how this is going to stop itself perhaps moving around within the, the yeah. actual connector apart from the length of the conductors. Because I've seen that kind of connection in underground joints before but there's a resin filled one yeah. where it's kind of locked into place by the resin so you know I think maybe we just need some more information about this product. We're willing to be corrected, willing yeah. to be educated but we're just not 100% sure. I, and what I'm saying is I'm not going to suggest X, Y and Z about the product because I can't find enough information on the sheet and I can't find enough information online, yet people fitting them all day long are now chuckling to themselves going, Gaz, it's this, Gaz, it's that. No, just, just send that information no, no, no. to me. Yeah. So I'm going to hold um, judgment on this. It, it gives you the ability, mm -hmm. by the looks of things, if it can be buried, to have a supply going around a garden and you tee off to each lighting point that you fancy. Yep. Okay, I like that. It's got the gel technology. We're all comfortable with that technology. Mm -hmm but there's some little bits in there that I'm going to need a little bit more clarification with. Yeah. So I'm going to be on the fence with this one. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, in theory, yeah, in theory, a great product. Yeah. Resin joints can be a bit of a hassle to fit. You've got to wait for them to go off. Um, but kids will love it because you get this, uh, you get this <laughs> ectoplasm that comes with it. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, oh, does that not bother you? Just, uh, just messing all that lovely yeah, glossy yeah. surface it up, man. Yeah. It, well, I think it goes back not. in. It's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. So, fundamentally, it's through, everywhere, though. <laughs> fundamentally, Whisker and the Shark Gel technology is excellent. I just personally need a little bit more information yeah. before maybe I would install one, bury it, and feel comfortable I'd hit all the specification yeah. of the product. And ideally, we'd like Whisker to get in touch and maybe yeah. just give us a bit more information. Make sure on that one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. then. So, who are we on to now? Are we, are we down to Joe again? Back over to me. I've got the CK Armor Slice. Uh, okay, so. I'm sure that looks like a plumbing tool. Yeah, now, Gordon yeah. assures me there's a hilarious joke involved in this, something to do with Plumber Joe. Joe the Plumber. Joe the Plumber. Famous in the US election. 
Uh, a few years ago, it was always, what would Joe the plumber think? Well, what does Joe the plumber think? <laughs> well, Joe's not a plumber. <laughs> uh, but Joe's got uh, this, this device here, which is obviously for stripping the armoring off armored cables. Now, again, it's the type of product where, just as if you're using a hacksaw, you're not looking to cut all the way through the armorings. <laughs> that would be the first mistake that uh, perhaps you might make. But what we're aiming to do here is just to score those armorings so you can snap them off. And it works in exactly the same way as uh, the, the plumbing tool that it very much resembles does as well. We've got a, a pipe little, cutter. Yeah. What did I say? Pipe cutter. You pipe said cutter. plumbing tool. Plumbing you tool. Meant, you meant pipe cutter. Oh, I wouldn't know. Not a plumber. <laughs> it's, it's terrible when a carpenter has to correct you there, Joe. And I've got no wood <laughs> products for heart. you this time. We? <laughs> okay, so we're going to um, just crank this up onto uh, the outer sheath there. While you're doing that, I think, Gordon, was this not recommended through social media to us? Yes, it was. This one. Before we did this, we put a shout out to, uh, to our followers, uh, mainly mm. on Instagram. And yeah, this is this was one of the products that they're certainly using and was recommended yeah. for um, for steel wire armoured cable. Yeah. So you can see that just by tightening up a little bit every sort of rotation, eventually yep. you get through the, the PVC layer and then you can you're looking the to start chopping through there. I'm not 100% convinced on this tool. I've, I've used a very similar one before. And for me, there's a, there's a little bit of a design flaw inherent in this, which is that the hacksaw blade that's positioned in here, if you were to cut in the direction that it suggests using a proper hacksaw blade, so, you'd be cutting backwards with the blade, which means yeah. you're just blunting the hacksaw blade. And that kind of makes me feel like maybe this is blunting the tool. So I think it, I think it works, but I don't know how good it is in terms of how many cuts it will do. I'm Come wondering on. whether there's a race in it where I take you on with a hacksaw, in with oh, a chance. No. Oh, I think you might be able to shout with that one, so we're not going to do it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking. Of. You've, you've experienced I've, that I've before. Got, I've used one, a plastic one. Yeah. Uh, the, the downside with the plastic one was it was it just seemed a little bit a bit feeble, perhaps. Yeah. And the spare blade was in another bit of plastic which you lost. But the good thing yeah. on this one is the spare blades are actually stored. Yes. In, Sim in the handle, just under a little screw. Sim there, standing which is really, yeah, which is really handy. Okay. Which is really handy. Okay. So so again, I'm willing to, you know, I'm willing to kind of persevere with it and see how it works. So if anyone has a big armoured cable installation coming up, Joe would love to come down and help you. Ah, good. Yep. I, can't, I can't hear him shouting for me. So, <laughs> so, 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 we'll so again, that's probably a product loved by people who use it all the time. Yeah. And then people who are, are just having, oh, are looking at too many things that aren't wrong with it. Yeah. Actually, all the things that are wrong yeah. with it. So again, it's, it, it looks like it's done the job. It does look like it's uh, scored through some of those quite nicely. But it does also look like there's a little bit of distortion on the end of that with, as well. With so. the lack of knife, could you pull the outside PVC off? Yeah, I think I could. Yeah, I'll probably get them off. Yeah, see, I don't know if maybe I've gone a bit too far with some of these and they've so twisted around. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. So Overcooked well, it on some it of them. Proves it cut. Yeah. So, so it's cut right the... through some of them, which is good. Again, that's again experience with that tool. Yeah, I can say you learn your tools, don't you? Yeah. So let's well. have a look at. I think you're losing your argument now, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on. oh dear. Oh hang on. dear. So that one's not. Oh there, shouldn't it? Yeah, it's gone, but yeah, that's that's work. that gives you the old yeah. hook. Yeah, I don't know. Again, I'm willing to, I'm willing to practice. You know, maybe revisit this. No, 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 no. Yeah, Just trying to the race off the one effort. No, no I, I think, fine. I think you know, need to have a bit oh, of a warm think, up. Oh. See again, I'm yeah. yeah. And, nice. and what's alarming there is for me personally, one side was all the way through. Yeah. And yet one side was and I was to twisting the same amount all the way around. Pressure, yeah, yeah. Before you turn the pressure up. Yeah. Again, it's probably a tool that once you do it ten times, you're all over. Right. I'm saying the instructions you shouldn't have to tighten it up once you start. But obviously we didn't read the instructions. Do we? we don't bother, do we? <laughs> <laughs> I did. You did. Yeah. 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 There wasn't enough to read. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. on my one. Maybe, maybe we could go for a race with that. We'll have a look at that. Oh. Have a look at that online. But yeah, yeah, in principle, I think this is a really great idea. I absolutely love it. Um, I just wonder if it's got the longevity that I'd, I'd expect in a tool and how often I have to replace that blade. So uh, it'd be interesting to, to uh, yeah, do a few more trial runs with that and revisit it a little bit down the line and see how well it's performing. But again, when we're out on site and we're visiting the electricians yeah. as we did this week, yeah. maybe if they've got one, they can, they can show yeah. us it in action. Yeah, Absolutely. rather than seeing us do it. Perhaps Always willing to be convinced. Yeah. yeah, okay. Final product of the five. Um, we're on with a Linian clip. This is their super clip range. So this is designed for steel wire armoured. Also can be used on conduits as well. Um, again, you know, the simplicity of it is for all their clip range is the fact you drill one hole, you obviously insert this steel armoured, you push it into place, but this is a subtle difference on the super clip. Mm -hmm. The super clip can be struck with a hammer just to get that final push into the wall. Cool. As always, what I like about it, there's no plastic, mm -hmm. it's one hole, yep. and it's a very fast connection. Yeah. And we all know that when you've got quite large steel armoured cables and you're hanging them on PVC cleats, 
is that a secure fixing? We know we're going to have to be stopping premature collapsing. So every now and again, there'll be a slightly different fixing, yeah. maybe one of these. Okay, or or do we just move over to these? I think a lot of um, a lot of countries on the continent. I think you spoke about this with the uh, team yeah. at Linian. A lot of uh, countries on the continent actually only have metal fixings anyhow, don't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. Everyone thinks about Linian when it comes to fire uh, yeah. premature collapse cable. I think they could just they're great general purpose cable, um, and making an installation neater. Yeah, yeah. that's just yeah. so it's not just about. Yeah, about the safety aspects. Am I right in thinking as well that Linian actually they had to reprocess the paint covering on this as well, so, yep. so it wouldn't chip when it was struck yep. with a hammer. Absolutely. And again, it shows that commitment to quality that yeah, we've, we've come to expect from Linian, doesn't it? Yeah. And including where we are today. So we're at Doncaster Cables, which is a uh, UK um, manufacturing business, and they've been here for 35 years. Also, that these clips are made in the UK. So mm -hmm. again, that's something else I, I, I like that about the product. It should be sung about a lot. So again, uh, another little handy product. I think it will make the electrician's life easier. Okay, and installing multiple supports for steel armoured on the surface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's good. Okay, so that rounds us up uh, with our uh, armoured cable innovations. We've now got the biggest collection of Allen keys ever. <laughs> uh, we'll, have to, uh, we'll have to find a, a use for them. Uh, if, you've, uh, if you've got comments on the products we've got, mention it in the video underneath. Uh, people always ask about the price. So if you want to put ask about the price underneath, I'm sure someone from the manufacturers will point you in the right direction. We will have another roundup next month. We will put a shout out on social media beforehand to try and get some recommendations again uh, for the products. But uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Cheers.